Being you and I have waited over 19 months for this moment, let's dispense with the pleasantries and dive right in. 992 Targa. This one is a 4S. Some of the numbers we already kind of know. 443 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque comes at a relatively low 2350 RPM. There are two transmissions on offer. Sadly, this one has the PDK. However, one can spec it with a seven-speed manual Vlendam. Everything else kind of changes, specifically the performance numbers. So the VMAX, it drops to a paltry 188 miles an hour. Hopefully you can live with that. Zero to 60 with Sport Chrono, uh, 3.4 seconds. Now, why do those numbers get affected? Well, you're looking at a bit of a chubby girl here because the lightest Carrera S, which happens to be a two-wheel drive manual, is almost 400 pounds lighter than this. 400, put another way, that's almost 15% weight gain. Now, do I give a rat's ass about any of this? Well, the manual transmission part, yes. But do I give a rat's ass about any of this? No, because if I haven't mentioned, 992 Targa, finally. Now that we understand those numbers, how do they work out here? Power delivery is as you'd expect from any Carrera S. There really isn't a noticeable weight penalty here. At the end of the day, you just can't help but having a smile on your face because it's a Targa 992 here. Now, all of the underpinnings, chassis control systems, and most importantly, performance options make the jump to the 4S Targa. Like, for example, the four-wheel steering system that literally transforms these cars, that's on offer here. The front end, specifically the all-wheel drive system that we first saw in the 992 about a year and a half ago, that's the same as the C4. The hardware and the springs are the same as the C4S Cabriolet. And then there are minor changes to the programming of both the software as well as the parameters for PASM and if the car is equipped with PDCC. From there, there are two major departures. Uh, number one, you can get any drive system you want as long as it's all-wheel drive. This really is no difference from the 991. So I did some digging around with Porsche because me personally, I'd love a two-wheel drive manual transmission target. That's a GT3. That, they kind of laughed in my face. However, they claimed that this was always an all-weather car. That's the way they look at the targets. I don't know if I agree with that, but at least we have a manual transmission, so I'm not being too greedy. Uh, and then there is, what is this based on? Is it based on the coupe or is it closer to the convertible? Turns out it is closer to the convertible and that makes perfect sense because what they're trying to do is increase the structural rigidity of an open top car even though this one has the hoop of the Targa bar which I would assume helps with the structural rigidity. Now they do take one other trick from the Cabriolet and that they upsize the anti-roll bars. They're thicker and by design a bit stiffer to offset the extra weight of the Targa. Well, if Cockham and the gang are going to give us better anti-roll bars, we might as well put them to the test. Uh, downshift, getting this turn aggressively. Oh man, it is going to be back in a Targa! Yeah, a little bit more wind noise, but who cares? Get a bit more aggressive. And this is a normal little Grand Am Sport in the suspension. Only by doing that have I noticed. The weight difference is more noticeable. I would say on a daily basis here, than between the convertible and the coupe. Going to interrupt myself because you and I need to be frank with one another. The weight differential between this and a C4S Cabriolet is a grand total of 46 pounds. Aside from all this, there are some very specific reasons why we're feeling more of a weight difference here. First is the center of gravity. It's 10 millimeters higher in a Targa. Then the weight distribution is ever so slightly moved towards the rear. And then very oddly, PASM, yes, is fitted as standard to these cars, but the PASM Sport suspension, where it lowers the ride height by 10 mils, that is not on offer in a Targa. You would think they would make that standard to offset the higher center of gravity. Then the roof itself, uh, the structural items are very similar to the Cabriolet in that it's made up of two magnesium panels that fold, no hinges, but it runs on two cables. Now let's put all that together, the Targa bar, uh, the glass panel, all of the very complex moving parts, that most likely is the culprit in the feel of the difference. And for the avoidance of doubt, it's not a weight penalty on the acceleration. There's no weight penalty there at all. It's just in the feel of the vehicle. 
I'm not surprised that I'm sharing with you that there really is no cowl shake to speak of here. Uh, I would go so far as to saying these 992 open top cars, whether they're Cabriolets or Targas, even the 991s that came before them, these are kind of the gold standard. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game of mine, the options game with today's absolutely magnificent contestant, the 2021 Porsche 911 Targa 4S, otherwise known as a 992, for a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $135,200. To that, we add racing yellow. Not something I would choose. We will discuss it in a future episode. Thankfully, it is $0. Then we add the Targa roof in black. Also, something I would not choose, but thankfully, $0. Then, leather interior in black. Take a guess whether I would choose it or not. But then I saw the build sheet before I got the car, and it's listed as checkered sport text seat centers. Now, I thought that was a very fancy and modern way of saying houndstooth, like we've seen in those Cayennes and older 911s. I'm thinking to myself, Okay, I'm not excited about the yellow or the black roof, but black leather seats with houndstooth in the center, this thing is gonna be super cool. I was telling all my friends about it here at the airport. Then the car showed up and I saw this. It's not terrible, but it's not worth $3,830. Uh, to that, we add something very important, I think worth every penny, the sport design front fascia. Now, when I first saw the 992, the one design element I did not like was the front. It had this like open face, like this big mouth. And it just, it didn't look as good as the 991.2. This fixes that problem, changes the entire front design of the car. I thought it was only for the Targa. Turns out it's a Porsche exclusive manufacturer option and worth every penny at $3,240. Then we press on to something that we first saw in 991.2 Targa GTS, and that is the black Targa bar. Now, you know me, I'm a freak for design, and I love that historical design. It's like a sliver of historical design element that goes into the Targas that started the 991s with the silver Targa bar that looked just like the one from 1965. The GTS, they offered it in black. And okay, you want to differentiate GTS, great. Me personally, I would still stick with the silver. Now they're making the black on offer in the lesser Targas. I wouldn't do it, but it's an extra 700 bucks. Uh, the eight-speed PDK, zero dollars. Uh, Porsche dynamic chassis control, very important, transforms these cars, $3,170. Sport chrono, very important in these cars, but I'd like to point out, it is optional in this PDK car for $2,790. However, if it were fitted with a manual transmission, that would be free. Then the sport exhaust system, specifically with the tailpipes in black, which makes it Porsche exclusive manufacturer, and thus the price goes to $2,950. Rear axle steer, very important in these cars, $2,090. Then we press on to the brakes. Whether it's a Carrera 2S, 4S, Targa, convertible, or hardtop, the brakes that are fitted as standard, 350 mils all the way around, steel rotors, they work absolutely more than fine. Thus, I wouldn't spring for the Porsche ceramic composite brakes, which this car has for $8,970. Power Steering Plus, this is something you and I joke around about a lot. At some point, we'll do a test drive of it. But in reality, you're not paying for power steering. You're paying for a different tune on your power steering for $280. Uh, this car is fitted with the staggered 20 and 21 inch wheel sizes. That is standard. However, the Carrera Classic design wheel, that's optional for $1,260. Then after you pay that money, you gotta pay an additional amount of money for the wheel center caps in color Porsche Crest, $190. Then a Germany specific, well, not a Germany, European specific option. This car was flown over to the US from Germany for people like me to drive. It's here for like a week or two. So it has the very fancy and much safer, always on high beam laser light system. 
And this, all I can say is please, Department of Transportation, EPA, whoever blesses these things, please get off your ass and bless them because it transforms your night driving experience and I would argue make most people better drivers. Granted here, it's a lot of money. They call it the LED matrix design headlights in black with the Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus. It's a lot. It's also part of Porsche Exclusive Manufactura and that costs $4,010 money well spent. Clear taillights, I don't know if I would go for this, $990, it's also Porsche exclusive manufacturer. Lane change assist, $1,060, adaptive cruise control, $2,000, may I point out, those are fitted to standard to most fancy Hyundais. Uh, adaptive sports seats plus with 18-way memory package, $3,470. Uh, heated GT steering wheel, $590. And then a dubious option, the smoking package. Now, I love me a cigar, however, I would never smoke one in my car. Uh, so good news, that is zero dollars. Interior trim inlays in matte carbon fiber. May I make a suggestion here? There is wood on offer, do that here instead. $2,100. The Bose surround system, uh, it works great at $1,600. However, you're already going for a $130,000 car. You might as well get the Burmester, even though it costs like between three and $5,000. Uh, then the only other thing we add here is the destination handling for $1,350 for a total retail price of $181,840. You and I need to slow down and spend a little bit of time with the roof up for two reasons. Number one, the construction, both the panel itself as well as the headliner. Here it is virtually identical to the Cabriolet, both in look as well as the overall feel of driving the car. Like if you don't look behind you and know that there is this target bar here, you'd swear that you are driving a Cabriolet 911, 992. And then number two, I spoke to Achim about the structural rigidity of the target with the roof up as compared to the Cabriolet with the roof up. And really no surprise here. This one is stronger. Now, if I'm reading the tea leaves correctly, that is most likely a function of the Targa bar back here. Maybe a little bit of the glass if I'm stepping out of bounds of my engineering abilities. And then last but not least is the usability of this on a daily basis. After all, it's sort of a convertible. Is it louder? Does it sound louder on the inside? Well, downshift a bit for you here. Let's get down a second gear, wind it out a bit. I'd be hard pressed to say there's a significant difference in decibel levels between this and the Coupe Carrera S's that we've driven. Granted, I'm significantly biased about these things and I wanna believe that the big glass cover back there is this open canopy to make these wonderful extra sounds, but that would, that would be a bridge too far even for me. If you couldn't tell, this is an open top car. Yet throughout this entire episode, we have demonstrated unusual control over pitch, squat, dive, and roll. That, for the avoidance of doubt, does not normally happen in cars with no roof. And yeah, we experienced it in the Cabriolet version of this, but that, it, it's kind of a different carrying case, a different flavor of this. I personally prefer this flavor. Granted, mine, I wouldn't want it in, I guess you would call this lemon, and I definitely wouldn't want the black target bar, and I absolutely would want the manual transmission, but you see where I'm going with this. And really the lesson you and I need to take away from this is whether it's this or the Cabriolet, this is like the reference, the gold standard for other OEMs to look at when converting a performance closed coupe to a performance open top convertible.